Welcome to the massive open online course on Aspen Plus. This course will enable one to learn the use of Aspen Plus software for process calculation, process engineering calculation, modeling and simulation. Before going into the details of this course, let us go through a short preamble which will enable us to understand what is process modeling and simulation in general and how Aspen Plus can be used for this purpose. Let us consider this process plant. Now this is not actually a full-fledged plant, rather it's a small unit of a large plant. Now I will explain the individual equipment that are present over here. The main equipments in this unit are one distillation column, there is another distillation column over here, there is a pump, there is a small reactor and there are also a heater and there is a mixer. So the process feed is passed through this heater and the mixer in series before it is fed into the reactor. The reactor output is then fed into the distillation column. Here the distillate is the product of this unit P1 <coughs> and the distillate the bottom stream of the distillation column 1 is fed into the second distillation column where the distillate is product number 2 of this unit. The bottom stream of the distillation column is then pumped back to the mixer. It is a recycle stream. <coughs> So basically, the mixer mixes the fresh feed and the recycle stream and the mixture is then fed into the heater to get heated up and it is sent to the reactor. Now, in addition to this main equipment, there are plenty of other ancillary equipments and devices such as measuring devices, control system units, there are various pipelines, there are safety devices and alarms and there are mechanical structure as well which are necessary to uh, build these process units. Now for the time being these are not important for the focus of our discussion. <clears throat> we pick and choose only these six units for our discussion because these are the principal units. <clears throat> now, we make a schematic of the process plant where we have kept the principal units that is mixer, the heater, the reactor, distillation unit 1, distillation unit 2, and the pump. These six units we have kept. All other things 
we are not interested about. Now what happens in this unit of the process plant? We give feed. Feed means the material feed. The feed which is being heated up before it goes to the reactor and the reaction happens, the reactor content is then distilled. That is the feed, material feed. And also we have energy feed. Because we have to operate heater, we have to operate the condensers and the reboilers of the distillation column. We have to operate the pump. We need electrical energy. So basically in this process plant, we have to give two types of feed. One is material feed, another is energy feed. And the product we will get out of it, this is P1 and this is P2, two types of products. So ideally, we have to make sure that these products, they, they are up to the desired standard of their quality and quantity. In other words, we have to make sure that the product rate, the flow rate of the product and its quality is maintained. Now, <clears throat> whatever we have in the process plant, what could be the major tasks of a process engineer out of it? What may be the duties? The first one, we may have to design a new plant. This plant may not be in an existing condition. As a process engineer, we may have to design it for some purpose and that design can be given to the fabricator for fabrication and then installation. In order to do that, we have to do certain calculations based on some mathematical calculations or we may have to uh, work with an existing plant of this nature which is there for years together. It might have served us for several years before the market demand has changed the scenario. In the market, nowadays the product quality may be a different in demand. So we have to change the product quality. Earlier, say 95% purity might be enough, but nowadays our competitor is selling at the same price a 99% purity. Obviously, then our product will not be sold in the market. In such situation, we have to revamp our process to meet the market demand. So we have to change a few things. We do not know what to change, but we have to do some what if analysis. That means if we change the heater temperature, if we change the condenser pressure, if we change the reboiler ratio, how far the product quality will change? So these are the various what if analysis that we can do in order to arrive at the market demand quality. Now these things cannot be done in the real life plant. The plant manager will not allow one to go and meddle with the system. So one needs to do on pen and paper some calculation. How to do that calculation? We all know we have to replace these processes or we have to replace this equipment with their mathematical 
counterpart. Here you see we have replaced the, the mixer, heater, CSTR, all of them have been replaced by a set of differential and algebraic equations. And these equations have been taken from textbook. They are well-known equations. They have been developed from mass balance, energy balance, rate equations for CSTR, the vapor liquid equilibrium in case of distillation column, etc. So these are all standard equations whose structures are same. No matter which distillation column you use, they remain same. What changes? The number of trays change in a distillation column. The components change. In one distillation column, you may work with methanol. Another distillation column, you can work with ethanol and so on. So based on the component that you use, your property database will change. The flow rate, temperature, pressure, those uh, things will change, but the structure of equation remain same. <clears throat> so, if your structures are same, you need to feed the mm. data. In When you work with mathematical formulation, the real life feed is not of any use. Here, you have to use that data. If it is flow rate, then you have to give some information about how many kilomoles per hour or how many kgs per hour or what is the quality, whether 50 mole percent or 25 weight percent, etc. And also energy data in terms of joule or for a con continuous system, it is wattage, joules per second. So these data have to be fed into the process and the calculations can be done. All these equations have to be solved simultaneously. And you know how to solve simultaneous equation. For an example, if you have an equation 3x uh, plus 2y is equal to 5, you cannot solve this equation because you have two unknowns and one equation. So you have degrees of freedom 1. There may be plenty of solutions uh, with pair x and y, but you have to fix either of them. Then the other things will be fixed. But instead, if you have another equation like 5x plus 9y is equal to 11, then obviously you have two equations and two unknowns, you have degrees of freedom 0. That means there will be only one pair of x and y, for this the system is defined. So the same idea has to be reflected with the entire plant. Here you have to count the number of equations in these units and you have to see how many variables you have. Accordingly, you have to fix some of the variables as per your requirement and the process data. They, they are mostly temperatures, pressures and inlet conditions, uh, etc. And when the degrees of freedom is zero, uh, it is ready to run the simulation. So all the equations run parallelly and then the output result comes out of the calculation. Now this kind of operation uh, 50 years back people used to do on pen and paper because they didn't have any other option. But nowadays uh, after the advent of computer, people write computer code because that is easier for calculation. But for a complicated system, even writing a computer code is also tedious. For an example, a distillation column, each and every tray 
they have at least three ordinary differential equations. One is for mass balance, one is for component balance, and the third one is for enthalpy balance. And this balance occurs at each and every tray. Suppose a distillation column has 50 trays, then we have to solve 150 parallel ordinary differential equations. Now talk about two distillation columns, the number rises to 300. And add on the equations of pump, CSTR, heater, it will be a gigantic task. Now the question is, is there any other option for easy handling of these equations? The answer is yes. Aspen Plus does it. How? You take the example of this. This is the Aspen Plus window. We will go into the details of window later. Uh, we will learn it later in detail. But I will show how it is done. At the bottom, you can see the model palette. Here, you have the models of mixer, models of separator, models of heat exchanger, column, reactor, pressure changer, and so on. So what you can do, if you want a mixer, you can simply drag this over here. If you need a, a heater, just go to the exchanger, bring it over here. If you want a reactor, just go there and CST here, bring it here. Similarly, bring the columns, distillation column, another distillation column, and lastly, we need a pump. So bring the pump over there and there these are the six units you need and now you have to connect the material stream so the red things are required without them nothing can happen the simulation so this is required one or more material stream. So this is the fresh feed. It is connected with the extensive of product. <coughs> so this is connected, the pump output, the recycle loop, they are mixed. So mixer output, is connected to the heater. The heater output is connected to the reactor. Reactor output is connected to the column. First column output is connected to the second column. The second column output is again connected to the pump. And we have here product 1 and here product 2. Now here you can see the same structure, the model, the unit we have connected. Now each and every, every module, this is only the front end. The actual calculation happens at the background. So when we are dragging the column all the equations associated with the column, they are taken into the simulation in the background. We don't see these equations, but those equations are there behind them at the backstage. In the front end, we have this small 
icon that represents the distillation column. Now, uh, as you understand, in the distillation column, you have to set some values. Just look at the values what we need to give. We need to give the number of stages. We need to give the feed stage. We need to give the reflux ratio and so on. So these are the data we have to feed in. But the background equations, we don't bother because they are all set by S pen plus. We don't have to pick and choose those equations. So this is how the entire operation works in S pen plus. So this is menu driven. It is uh, a designer's delight. Okay. One designer can always uh, add in the, uh, this, this diagram. Okay. And uh, a designer can always add in certain new equipment. Uh, it, he can just uh, disconnect it. Suppose if I want to disconnect, then I have to put right click and then we can cut. Then this vanishes off. This also we can cut and this vanishes off. Instead, we can use some other column. We can use a rat frac column, which is also a distillation column. We can put in here and then we can connect or reconnect the stream at the destination over here. And then again, we can reconnect. We can reconnect this stream with source, which is here. And finally, this is our product. So when we delete something, then all the equation associated with that particular module, it also vanishes. And when we add in something, then all the equations associated with them, they come in. So that is the beauty of S Pen Plus uh, front end. So this is the flow sheet model. We'll learn it later in detail. So this is how the mathematical formulation can be done. So we talk about the approach to Aspen simulation. Now, um, just now whatever we had discussed, that is actually sequential modular approach. That means we take some module and that we place them in sequence and then uh, those unit operation blocks they are called modules they are connected and solved in certain sequence for steady state operation this is called s pen plus but not all the um, unit operations that are available in chemical engineering uh, or process engineering unit, they may be standard. Like distillation column is standard, reactor is standard, heat exchanger is standard. But there are some equipment which may, may be non-standard equipment. So you will not find a standardized model in the model palette. For them, you have to write your own customized equation in order to work with. So you have the next one, equation oriented approach. There you have to work with customized model. Those are developed through equations which are solved simultaneously for dynamic simulation. Here it was steady state, here it is dynamic simulation and this is called Aspen Custom Modeler. And lastly, there is a combinatorial approach where 
S plane plus is used to initialize the steady state simulation and the equation oriented approach of S pen custom modeler is used for dynamic simulation which is S pen dynamics. Now in this particular course we have only S pen plus. We will discuss S pen plus. For S pen custom modeler and S pen dynamics there may be someone may float a different course altogether. So we will limit ourselves with S pen plus. So we summarize what we learned in S pen plus simulation. What is S pen plus simulation? It is about running a specially designed menu driven computer software in order to quantitatively assess chemical property or the process. Why do we do it? Because we want to predict the flow rate, the composition and physical properties of process streams, operating condition of the process, sizing of equipment while process designing, etc. And finally, how do we do it? We do it by compiling and interconnecting various menu driven blocks that have underlying physical relationship that is characteristic equation such as mass balance, enthalpy balance, equilibrium relationship, rate correlation like mass transfer, heat transfer and reaction kinetics. And these are the advantage of S pen plus simulation. It allows various configuration in quick succession, which is a designer's delight. Just a few minutes back, I explained how the blocks can be uh, taken out of the flow sheet and how a new block can be inserted. So the person, the designer, doesn't have to uh, pick and choose the equations out of his or her uh, uh, the computer code. He has to just uh, delete certain models or add certain models and everything is menu driven. So it can be done very quickly and the simulation also can be done very quickly. As a result, we will have reduced time and effort for new plan design because you can do faster calculation, you will have more number of solutions to analyze and uh, arrive at the appropriate design calculations. And it answers what if questions that we have already discussed. And it detects optimal process condition within the prevailing constraints. Sometimes the hard constraint comes like uh, suppose the calculation it arrives at a 110% uh, valve opening. But uh, in real life 110% valve opening is not possible. Valve can open only up to 100%, not more than that. But in real life calculation when we want to do some optimization this kind of constraints will come into picture and we have to uh, work with them. So debottlenecking that means identifying those process constraints and alleviate them that is also possible with S pen plus. And last but not the least this standardization of process is very important. All the common process engineering unit operations are modeled and they are standardized. And not only the model along with the data, data for nearly over 1500 pure components. Like if you want to use some common components like nitrogen, oxygen, or some hydrocarbons like methanol, ethanol or benzene, you do not have to look for their data. 
metal uh, the s pen has option you can pick the component from its database and attach them s pen plus knows where to bring the data from at what temperature so you just fix the temperature and pressure and flow rate suppose uh, we want to find out the specific heat which uh, depends only on the temperature so we have to say uh, the component in pentane at temperature say 300 kelvin aspen will uh, bring the data from its data bank we do not need to look for the data for that so uh, it has pure component data it has over 10,000 vapor liquid equilibrium uh, database also uh, it has 3,000 liquid liquid equilibrium binary database and it has over 60 models of thermodynamics methods like equation of state we can talk we can uh, use peng robinson method uh, redley kuang swave method etc those who are very con uh, conversant with thermodynamic methods um, you know what i am talking about so these are the advantages of s pen plus now to work with s pen plus first we have to uh, understand these basic process modeling features so we will begin our s pen plus training with uh, basic process modeling we will learn what is the starting page uh, we have already seen a glimpse of the starting page few minutes back uh, we know what is uh, how we will learn how to open a new simulation box how to open an existing one what are the extensions templates overview uh, we will be introduced to the physical property environment uh, setting up the user's in inter universe method and method assistant uh, then we will be introduced to simulation environment and flow sheet again we have seen a few glimpses uh, then we will learn how to simulate and get the result and finally we will see how to analyze the result now the best way to learn a software is to watch someone using this software and better way of learning it is to uh, go through a simple example now we talk about a two-phase flash uh, which is the simplest uh, example that i can i could think of now uh, first we will learn what is the problem and then we shall uh, solve the problem in textbook approach we will take the uh, theory from the textbook data also from uh, Perry's handbook and solve it on pen and paper and later we will do the same thing in Aspen Plus and, and then we will see how far the data and the results match. So the problem is something like this. An equimolar stream of n pentane and n hexane, equimolar that means 50-50 mole percent at 140 degree Fahrenheit and 75 psia temperature and pressure is given it is fed to a vessel where it is flashed to 15 psi with vapor and liquid products in the equilibrium at 130 degree fahrenheit so you can see both temperature and pressure they are reduced 
so the pressure is maintained at 15 psi temperature is also maintained at 130 degree fahrenheit so one thing is sure the fit condition is at 140 degree fahrenheit and outlet condition is at 130 degree fahrenheit so these are the different temperature conditions that we have now what is to be done use raoul's law that means it is an ideal system we have to assume for the simulation of this system that is the job that we have so this is the solution procedure we have we have to find flow rates of vapor and liquid let us represent it with v and l the k values of n penton and n hexen we have to find the mole fractions of n penton and n hexen in vapor phase and liquid phase so yp and xp are for penton p represent penton so yp is for n penton xp is for uh, also for n penton in vapor and liquid phases respectively and as it is a binary uh, system so 1 minus yp is n hexen and 1 minus xp is n hexen in vapor and liquid phases and lastly we have to calculate the heat duty of the flash operation now these are the relevant equation for calculation uh, the first thing we have to find the vapor pressure and um, we know the Antoine equation is used for finding the vapor pressure and vapor pressure depends upon the temperature and here we have an equation two equations rather for n penton and n hexen these are the vapor pressures of penton and hexen at this temperature now we have to use raoul's law so what is raoul's law this is raoul's law where kp is equal to vapor pressure by the total pressure and this is also equal to the mole fraction in vapor phase by the mole fraction in liquid phase so this is for penten and this is for hexen so we know p if we can calculate we know the temperature 130 degree fahrenheit equivalent uh, in kelvin we have to calculate so we can understand how to calculate them so if we know vapor pressure and total pressure is known we can calculate kp and kh so if we know kp and kh then we have two equations and two unknowns so we can easily calculate xp and yp so if we know xp and yp the lastly the balance equation we know everything in these equations except v and l which can be found out very easily and next is the heat duty calculation for heat duty the relevant equations are you have to first find out the specific heat this is the specific heat uh, at temperature t specific heat is also a temperature dependent function and these are taken from Perry's handbook similarly equation for finding enthalpy of vaporization at temperature t and at critical temperature tc these are also taken from Perry's. we can calculate all these four so 
enthalpy of inlet feed, outlet liquid and outlet vapor against a reference temperature because we know the enthalpies are always calculated uh, at a certain uh, against a certain reference temperature. So these are the equations for calculating HF, HL and HV and we all know about this value nothing is unknown. So we can calculate them. So heat duty will be the heat out minus the heat in. The enthalpy out minus enthalpy in. So that is the heat duty. So that much heat has to be fed to the flash tank. That is the heat duty. So this is how we calculate. The calculation procedure is like that. So these are the calculation. We have the available data T in, T out. Uh, they have been converted into the SI unit. So as pressure P. Now we have to assume two things. One is reference temperature. We can take anything. I have taken zero. It doesn't matter because in heat duty calculation, if you uh, heat duty calculation, it is the difference in enthalpy. So reference temperature should be same for all the enthalpy calculation. And the feed, uh, basically in a continuous system, everything is calculated per mole basis. So just for the calculation sake, we have to take a number. So we have taken one pound mole per hour, which actually is in terms of kilo mole per second, it stands to be like this. And these are the computed values based on them. Uh, we have calculated the vapor pressures to be like this. On that basis, we have calculated the K values. On that basis, we have calculated XP and YP. On that basis, we have calculated V and L. And finally, we have found the heat duty to be 1915 watt. Now let us do the same calculation in Aspen Plus. First we have to um, fix the components. Now we, we have two components over here. One is N Penten and other is N Hexen. So we do not know where to find the n penten and n hexen so we take the help of this button just increase a bit and here we write penten and find here Aspen Plus will dig out all the components that have remote connection with the word Penten. So just see, we have 112 trimethyl cyclopentane, 113 trimethyl cyclopentane, and so on. Here we have one chloropentane. So from this list, we have to dig out the uh, one which we are looking for. This is the one that we were looking for. So just press add selected compounds. Here this is added. N pen 01 it has given a component ID which anyway we can change anytime and this is the component name. C5, H10, H, uh, H12 is the allies. Similarly, we can go for a new search, say hexen. Here again, we have to dig out the component. Yes, this is the one that we are looking for. Add. Now we can close it. So these are the two components that we have got, n pentane and n hexen, hexen, n hexen.
we can change it anytime. Suppose we are not happy with this component ID n pen, so we write pen 10 and here we can write hexen. So instead of pen 10 and hexen, you can give any name, it doesn't matter, it is just an ID. This is the next, I mean, for any Aspen Plus, for that matter, for any simulation, uh, it is always best to go to the next button next button it says that go to the next input sheet needing input so in many a times we do not know where to go but next button if you press the simulation will take you the point where the next input is required now it is asking for the method base method that is the property method now, we know that we have to work with Raoult's law, which is ideal system. So our best method is ideal system. So it is ideal property method uses both Raoult's law and Henry's law. Just place. Now you can see here, there is a icon, which is half red and half uh, white. This, this means that the input is incomplete. The moment, is, the moment input is complete, you will find a blue tick like this. Okay? So the moment I choose ideal, you see a blue tick. That means the input is complete here. Until unless the input is complete, you cannot find this blue tick here. Now our property input is complete now we have to go to the simulation database now in the simulation we have to build the flow sheet first now in the flow sheet here we have a single flash tank okay so we have to look for flash it is available at separator so this is two outlet flash, model flash drums, evaporator, etc. with rigorous vapor liquid or vapor liquid liquid equilibrium. Now our case matches with that. We have two outlet flash with vapor liquid equilibrium. Okay. Now we have to add the material stream. So the red means always it is asking for input. So it is asking for one input and two outputs. So this is the feed. This is the feed input. This is the vapor output. And this is the liquid output. We can rename we can rename it so let us use it as rename it as feed we can rename it as vapor and we can rename it as liquid again it is just a simple name it doesn't have any other significance instead of vapor you can write v also instead of liquid you can write l also now again you write you press next it has gone to streams streams feed input now it is asking for input so what is the feed condition so as we know the feed condition is 50 mole percent n pentane 50 mole percent n hexane 75 psia pressure and 140 degree fahrenheit temperature so here the inputs are all in SI unit but our data has been given in um, in uh, English unit British unit so we change it from metric to English see it is asking for English unit we can mix and match. We can 
give it in C, we can give it in Kelvin also. Uh, but uh, whatever we give, the Aspen Plus software has its own uh, way of converting the unit as it demands. So we give the data 140 degree Fahrenheit and 75 PSIA pressure. And then the total mole flow rate we have used 1 pound mole per hour. So it is 1 pound mole per hour. Now it is still half red and half white because we have not given the composition. So composition we can give it in mole flow rate or mole fraction, mass fraction, standard volume fraction, etc. We will give it in mole fraction. So pentane is 50% means 0.5 and hexane is again 0.5. So total is 1. This is the total mole fraction 1. The moment I give 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it becomes blue tick. That means the simulation, the input stream specification is complete. Now, this is still the block, input block B1, that is the flash, it is asking for input. We can directly go there or we can just safely press next, it will come to this one. It is always safer to press next rather than going directly over there. Here again, it is asking for temperature and pressure. It is asking for temperature and pressure which are given. Instead of temperature, one can give heat duty. Temperature fixing means we have to supply the heat in such a manner that the temperature is fixed at 130 degree Fahrenheit. Now instead, we can say that I will not give more than this much of heat duty. Let the temperature fix let the block fix its own temperature. So either you can fix temperature or you can fix heat duty, not both. In this case, we have to fix our temperature because the problem states like that. So temperature is how much? It is 130 degree Fahrenheit and pressure is 15 psi. The moment I give it, it is blue ticked. That means all of them now are blue ticked. Okay. So the required input is complete. Okay. Required input is complete. Now we press next. There is no input required. It is asking run the simulation now all the required input is complete. Run the simulation now. You have to say yes. Okay, run it. So it is running the simulation in the background. Basically, it is working with all the set of equations that we have brought in from the, uh, from the model palette to the uh, equation, uh, to the flow sheet. Now we go back to the simulation. You see, what happens? Uh, these are the loading simulation engine, processing input specification, flow sheet analysis, competition order for the flow sheet, calculation begins for block 1, flash 2, simulation calculation completed, no warning, no error, generating result. So we have got some results. So go to the result summary. What are the streams? We have three streams and all these streams are given here. Feed, liquid, vapor. What are their temperature? See liquid temperature 
feed is in liquid phase. What it says, the feed at 140 degree Fahrenheit, it has to be liquid. Uh, vapor phase, vapor, liquid phase, liquid, temperature is 140. So both liquid and vapor, we have 130 degree Fahrenheit, but feed is 140 degree, pressure 75, 15, 15. Now, smaller calculation with substream, mole flow. So how many moles of vapor and liquid we see? 0.63653 pound moles per hour, 0.36347 pound moles per hour. Now let us check with our calculation. Just go back. Here you see, we had calculated V 0.63, here is 0.63653, L 0.37, here 0.37. There will be slight uh, variation in calculation because uh, Aspen may not use the uh, Antoine equation. It has its own data bank which it is using. And what about the mole fraction of pentane? 0.3378 in liquid phase, 0.5953 in vapor phase. So it is almost same. Uh, mole fraction, you see, the mole fraction, uh, pentane, liquid phase, 0.33. Uh, vapor phase 0 0.59, 0 0.59, 0 0.33. And lastly, the heat duty. Heat duty we have calculated to be 1915 watt. So let us go back to the block B1. Here some results are given. Heat duty is 6811. British thermal unit per hour. Now, if you want to see it in watt, just go there. Watt. It is 1996. Our case, it was 1915. So, 1.9 kilowatt. So, it is also 1.9 kilowatt. Now, this much of error is evident because uh, we use Antoine's equation, uh, whereas Aspen Plus has its own set of equation and database which is proprietary in nature. They are very much realistic and uh, they are tested. Also. So that is how we solve it in Aspen Plus and the results are also matching. So instead of going through this tedious calculation, we can simply put it in Aspen and do the calculation in a very simple manner. Now suppose if you want to change something, uh, if you want to change the feed input from say 75 psi uh, or 140 degree to 150 degree Fahrenheit, then we have to run the simulation once again and the heat duty will definitely change. Let us see what is the heat duty earlier it was 1996 now it is 18.48 so the heat duty has reduced so this calculation is very fast a design engineer can perform these calculations very fast and very effectively but the same calculation if you have to do in this fashion then it will take long time and sometimes very tedious so that is the advantage of S Pen Plus. Now, um, uh, with this small uh, introduction, in the next few lectures, we will go into the detail of how the S Pen Plus software can be used uh, most effectively. Thank you.